Welcome to Flourish and Thrive's Facebook Live Thursday show. Hey, it's Tracy here, and today I am talking about something that we've been hearing a lot, and I don't want to be a big bummer, but I'm curious. Are you having issues with your Etsy sales? Are they down this year? And if so, I'm going to show you three. Well, actually, you, you, I'm going to give you actually five ways. <laughs> uh, I got two bonus ways for you to turn an epic Etsy fail into the best holiday season ever. So sometimes it takes a little bit of resourcefulness when you're trying to get yourself out there for the holiday. So if you know other people who are selling on Etsy and others who are really struggling with the Etsy sales season and something's going on with the algorithm for them, then I would love for you to share this video with them. You can hit that little share button below the video, uh, share it in a message, share it in a group, share it on a page, and uh, help your other friends out too. Because sometimes it just takes a little resourcefulness. So first and foremost, I'm going bold here and I'm just gonna tell you, I am not an Etsy expert. But what I do know is that when you have a jewelry brand and you're trying to actually build a business, that one of the biggest um, mistakes a lot of designers make is that they rely on a third party platform like Etsy to produce the majority of their business. And it becomes a crutch over time. In fact, I wanna tell you a little story of a designer in our community or a, a team of designers as a business in our community who had or had a really great Etsy business. Uh, they were doing, last year they did about $150,000 in December alone just on Etsy. It's their busiest time of the year. They really rely on that cash flow to keep their business going. And um, they've been, they had been trying, but probably, I don't know what, how hard or what, but they've been trying to actually like potentially move away from the platform and get most of their business on their website. But they were still relied very heavily on the Etsy platform. Well, something happened. Uh, they live in the Texas area, and during the hurricane, they weren't able to ship all their Etsy orders in a timely manner, and someone reported them, and their Etsy store got shut down right before the holidays, and that $150,000 worth of potential revenue that could have been coming to them this year was basically pulled away. So when that happens, what the heck are you supposed to do? Well, I know that for a lot of you, you're selling on Etsy. And one of the things that's going on right now is um, the Etsy algorithm is changing. It became a public company maybe, I can't remember, maybe two years ago or something. And it's not as reliable for consistent sales. You know, just like any business, they need to make money. So they're probably banking on people who are paying for um, ads or promoted posts. It also probably requires you to be sending traffic to it. So um, to get your sales and it's not just so many people just like stumbling acro across your shop. Also, the other downside of a platform like Etsy is that someone might see something in your shop that they like, but then get distracted, go somewhere else that they've searched on the, on Etsy and end up in another person's shop and end up buying from them because they're not focused just on you. And so this is like an ongoing problem that I've seen in uh, the jewelry community for a long time. For those of you who actually really want to build a legitimate brand. So if you don't have a website yet, get your own website. Please, please, please start a website. I'm actually going to um, put this down here. I didn't put this on my agenda for today, but I'm going to write it down right now. If you don't have a website yet and you're thinking of getting one, I would highly recommend the Shopify platform for a variety of reasons, primarily because it's one of the most robust. And uh, there's also SEO similar to Etsy built into the platform. So you can head on over. Uh, if you don't have one, check it out. We negotiated a discount for our community. If you go to floristriveacademy.com forward slash Shopify, you'll get an opportunity to jump on a free trial and get an ongoing 10% off of your membership fees to Shopify. Uh, that's a total sidebar. I wasn't planning on mentioning that, but since I'm telling you to get your own branded website, you might as well get a discount while you're doing it. So anyway, um, this has become a problem and I've heard a lot of designers just saying that their Etsy sales are down, their Etsy sales are down, their Etsy sales are down. So what do you do if your Etsy sales are down and you're really relying on that income for your business? Well, that you can do a lot of different things. Um, you know, on Etsy, like, you know, work on your SEO and your relisting and stuff like that, but it's really time consuming. And we're in this really short crunch right now, right? And trying to get people to actually buy our products right before the holiday. 
So we need to figure out a way to hustle. Hey, I see a bunch of you here. Hey, Tisha. Hey, Michelle. Hey, everyone. Um, if you're if you're on this podcast right now and, or this uh, Facebook Live and you are actually um, on Etsy or if you're on YouTube, I would love for you to actually just comment below and just say, hey, say, hey yes, I'm selling on Etsy. And I would love to know what your experience has been this holiday. So go ahead and post that below while I'm heading in. Uh, so one of the things that, you know, I just really want to encourage you not only is to get your own standalone site, but to be resourceful in times like these, because this is one of the hugest benefits that we have to having creative minds. We are resourceful people. We can come up with ideas all of the time. So use your creative brain and think of ideas outside of the box where you can start selling uh, more jewelry. So I'm going to give you a few things that you can do right now to maybe like spike some sales, get some more energy in, into your business and potentially turn this around and make this the, the best holiday season for sales in your jewelry business ever. So uh, that's, that's going to be the most important thing. So um, I want to, I want to mention one more thing about the Etsy platform before I dive into some of my tips for you today is that, you know, it's really a path for most of you using it. I'm not saying all of you because there are some people who use it very strategically or as a second source of traffic. But for a lot of you who use it, you use it as sort of a passive way for people to find you and you're not actively promoting your brand. Well, what ends up happening, like the situation with the, the people that I spoke about before who basically their Etsy store was shut down, they lost $150,000 worth of their December revenue because of that. Um, that's a big problem if you if all of a sudden your business goes from doing that one year over the next and then the store gets shut down because your business more than likely relies on that cash flow to keep it moving forward for the next year. But this sort of a passive approach to business ends up being golden handcuffs and you're kind of stuck. Like if you're not doing something else, then you're stuck on this platform that's not really serving you and not really going to, in the long run, build your business. And I'm not saying that this is an overnight solution, setting up your own website. It does take a lot of resilience and a lot of um, action and a lot of driving traffic to your website and pointing everything to it. That, in fact, that's why we completely why we decided to launch our SOS coaching program um, and why we have over <laughs> almost 40 people signed up for it to start at the beginning of next year. But it's also it's also something that I think a lot of people don't think about. Well, oh, Etsy is easy to get up and then they just let it sit and they don't think about the ramifications if something were to happen. So um, get out of this golden uh, handcuff mode and start being proactive about your business. Um, you know, I digress, but we're going to jump right into the tips right now. So uh, what's, what's really important is to start thinking long term and strategically overall, but using some of these tips in the short term to actually spike and inspire, inspire sales. I think it's really important. I, I see some comments going on and I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, address some of those in a moment. But one thing that I think is a really great opportunity for you to do is to jump on a Facebook live sale. So all of us have Facebook live friends and family who, who we connect with. You can do this on your personal page because a lot of times when we're starting out, some of those people are our best customers. This is a great opportunity for you to actually start sending traffic to your brand and website if you have it. And if you don't, you can do this Facebook live sale and, and send direct PayPal links for people to pay and they can just pay you directly. But number one, this is a great way for you to start collecting email addresses so you can grow your email list. Number two, it's a great way to use technology that's readily available to you. It takes a very short period of time to get it up. And number three, it's a fun, interactive way for your customers to engage with your brand. In fact, uh, one, of our, um, the, one of the students that we're coaching this year, uh, Lisa Lehman, I interviewed her for our podcast. It's a really great episode. You can head on over to floristhriveacademy.com forward slash episode 121. And she shares some of her tips about how she had an epic Facebook live sale that ended up making $7,000 in two hours. It was super awesome. She had some help. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, I would highly recommend it. Head on over to floristhriveacademy.com forward slash episode 121. All right, cool. So Facebook live sale, great opportunity for you. 
The next thing that you can do is create an item of the day. You can do this on your website and email it out to or item of the day or an item of the week, whatever you'd like. Um, but this is great, especially if you have extra inventory sitting around. You could just make something an item, send it out, and give it for maybe a special price or bundle it with something else, and really get create excitement around these pieces so that you can um, so that you can you can make some sales just on like a specific piece of jewelry. So I like doing this when you send this out to your email list, but you can also do this by promoting it on social media, um, getting on a Facebook Live once again, or you can you know just share it with your following um, either way. But it's an active way that you can start getting interest and excitement about your brand. Uh, you can also send that same promotion to your friends and family and ask them to share and your previous clients. You can give them like referral benefits. If they refer someone that turns into a sale, uh, they, they win a piece of jewelry or you can you know give them credit towards jewelry for every like X amount of people that they refer. Just a really great opportunity for you to, um, to sell more jewelry and also get rid of extra inventory as well. In fact, I'm taking my own tip. I, I just moved, for those of you who don't know, you might see a little bit different background here. And um, in that, you know, I'm like going through all my boxes and everything and going through my storage unit where I just start to put stuff that I don't want to look at, including my box of things, of beads and gems and jewels that I still, that are still sitting around. In fact, I have a bunch of strands of black diamonds and colored diamonds and stuff like that that I need to do something with from like literally 10 years ago. I'm not kidding. Uh, but I started going through that stuff and I'm making like little pieces of jewelry that I'm going to reach out to my clients and ask them if they need some last minute gifts. So this is a great opportunity for you to get rid of extra inventory, guys. Uh, the next thing that you can do is on the Etsy platform, I know that you can't collect email addresses and you're not supposed to be like, uh, you know, spamming them in the comments, but you can search by product and send individual messages to each person who purchased a something from you on your Etsy store and just follow up with them and ask them how they like their piece of jewelry and say, hey, you know, I know it's a holiday season. Things are crazy. I'm just curious, you know, as I wrap up the year, like how did you, how are you enjoying this piece of jewelry that you bought? You can list the piece of jewelry that you bought from me, X, Y, and Z. You know, I'd love to know. And then you can start a conversation with them and end it with let, let me know if I can help you with anything else that either for your gift giving needs or whatever. And it's not you being spammy, it's actually you approaching from a place of service. And I know you have to be careful with that, but that is like actually like a really, I know someone in our um, in our group actually did it, Canela, and she had some great results with people just even replying and giving you feedback. So that's an awesome place to even start just to get, just to kind of find out a little bit more about how your jewelry is being worn and received by your customers. Oops, I forgot to put this one up. Send individual messages, that's that tip. And so these two bonus tips are gonna be awesome. And we actually have, I have about 10 other sales tips. I'm actually gonna um, share this with you now. Uh, we made this call to action, Etsy. If you wanna type the words Etsy in all caps below, we have our simple sales hacks resource if you haven't grabbed it yet. We have 10 brilliant ideas from designers just like you who are really killing it with different ways that they're putting their brand out there and selling jewelry. So sometimes it takes a little resourcefulness to think outside of the box. And sometimes, you know, we're in our own little world and it's hard to think of things. So I really want to invite you to grab this resource, type Etsy in the comments below and download our simple sales tax resource. I'm going to also mention this at the end. All right. Are you guys ready for the bonus items? Let me recap the first ones first. Post a Facebook live sale, easy to get up and running right away. Have your friends and family share it, all that stuff. Get an item of the day going or an item of the week. Awesome opportunity for you to get rid of extra inventory and also spur some sales. Let me readjust this a little. Send individual messages on your Etsy account. Make You have to do this really stealthily though. It's really more about following up with your customer, not uh, pitching them on something else until they respond. And I would keep it not pitchy, just say like, let me know how I can help you with anything else or any of your gift giving needs, something along those lines. Let me know how you guys are liking these tips. Um, okay, so my bonus tip, number one, is create a holiday gift guide checklist. So this is Robin's idea. She used to do this for uh, her direct to consumer, I don't know how where she got this up, but I think she came up with it with one of her private consulting clients. 
that she, one of our clients that actually uh, sells to stores, et cetera. And um, years ago, she told, she came up with this idea in one of our groups. She's like, create a holiday gift giving checklist and send that out to everyone you know. And the checklist basically can include every single person that you need to buy a gift for, like your dog walker, your, um, you know, kids, teachers, uh, I don't know, the window washer. I, I, who has window washers? I, I have a window washer coming today, but that's <laughs> coordinated by the building. <laughs> I don't hire one, someone. But I remember when I was a kid, we had a window washer because there was a lot of windows in our building or in our house. Um, but just think outside of the box. You have a lot like maybe your friends list, maybe it's family members. You know, people do different things for gift giving. So remind them of all the people that they have to buy for so that they're not at the last minute just going to grab some tchotchke at a gift store because they forgot. So create a long, hey Jess, I see you on here. Maybe we can uh, curate some sort of list for our Diamond Insiders. But for those of you not in the Diamond Insiders, I really encourage you to come up with just um, an idea list of different people that you need to buy gifts for and send that out. And then my favorite, get in front of people live. Uh, not necessarily on Facebook Live, but actually in person. This is really important, uh, especially at this time of the year. I know a lot of you are trying to um, scale back on trunk shows, but there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. And if you didn't see my Rose All Day slash RJ as All Day Facebook Live yesterday, um, Abby or Jess, can you pop, drop a link to that? That would be awesome. Um, I, I kind of walk through some of these ideas of different ways that you can get in front of people live. But one of my favorite things was just to ask your friends to if you can if they're if they're up for letting you come into their office buildings at lunchtime and you set up a little trunk show, mini trunk show. You're there for like literally an hour and a half to two hours just during lunch, like twelve to one. Quick setup, quick setup, get out and. Um, I used to sell a ton of jewelry. I would go, I went to a bunch of office buildings and the men love it because it makes it buying gifts for their wives super easy. And women love it because they end up buying jewelry for themselves. So great opportunity. And then I used to send uh, my, I used to send uh, bags of jewelry with my friends to their offices because if they weren't allowed to set up trunk shows, I would just send them with a bunch of extra inventory. I'd say, hey, sell thousand dollars worth of jewelry and for every thousand dollars worth of jewelry you sell, I'll give you a free piece of jewelry where you earn credit towards this big piece that you want. So it's a great opportunity for you to all get some more exposure. And then you can also ask your friends who are doing this or if you're in sort of an office setting to actually go and uh, you can collect email addresses while you're doing this. Great opportunity. All right, guys. So see a bunch of you here. If you want to grab that guide to come up with more ideas, uh, type the words Etsy in all caps below, and we'll send you directions on how you can grab it right away. All right, I'm going to scroll through some of the comments. We got a lot of people here today. It's 57 comments already, 57 people here. A um, bunch of you are on Etsy. Oh, Kathy's selling on eBay. Awesome. She's doing great. Let's see. Uh, Melissa's saying, she's yes, she's on Etsy. Our sales tank during the holidays instead of increasing has been that way since I started though. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Marissa's saying, yes, I'm selling on Etsy. It hasn't been so great. It's a bit competitive. It's more of an easy platform. I'm actually working on my Shopify website right now. Awesome, Marissa. Um, and if you're not, if you're watching this not on Facebook, I'm gonna give you, you can grab actually this guide right here, the sales over at flourishriveacademy.com forward slash sales hacks. Uh, Michelle is saying, I do have my own website, but struggle, struggle to get traffic to it. Um, Michelle, we have a lot of great podcasts about getting traffic to your site. The best way to get traffic to your site, who can guess what it is? The best way to get traffic to your site. I'll give you virtual high five if you guess it. Post it in the comment below. Um, Karen saying, do these work for higher price point items or just under 200? So I'm gonna tell you the best way to get traffic in your site. I wanna see if anyone answers in just a minute. Um, and I will answer that question in just a moment. Uh, Karen, does this work for higher price pieces or under 200 for under, or just under 200? Um, I definitely think that this can work for any price point, all of these things. Um, it just depends on the audience that you're curating. Um, people aren't gonna necessarily probably pick up something for a teacher 
for $200 unless they're really wealthy. However, um, you know, I think for, uh, for a lot of us, like I just, uh, I, I hate to sometimes share this stuff with you guys, but I had a customer text me the other day. He just spent $8,000 with me over a text message. I didn't even get on the phone with him. He is a regular client, but yes, people will spend money. Okay, I love these answers that are coming in. Uh, Tisha says SEO, Gwen saying word of mouth, uh, Michelle saying blogging, let me, I'm gonna put these up, blogging, SEO, word of mouth. Yes, these are all great ways, but I think um, Ellen got it first and Melissa got it second, so you both get virtual high fives from me. Email marketing and your email list. Yes, woo, woo, woo. So the number one way to get traffic to your website is to send email to people who already know you and get that traffic. That's why it's important to be able to have a website that you can collect email addresses on and continue to send email. It's not the number of viewers on your site, it's the quality of viewers. And if you're relying on cold traffic, meaning people who don't know you, to land on your site and buy, the conversion rate for that, the typical conversion rate for that is 1%. 1% means that for every 100 people who land on your site, only one person buys. And that's not to scare you, but if people know who you are already and they like your jewelry already, that conversion rate can be so much higher because you're adding value and they've already purchased from you and they know who you are and they're probably previous clients. So anyway, that was my little sidebar. Uh, let me uh, pull this one down. Great job, you guys. Boom, I love it. I was like, boom, go Ellen and Melissa. I'm gonna put that on here, boom. All right, here we go. Let me, I have a couple other questions I wanna answer. Um, what do you use to showcase your jewelry? Do you have a special jewelry box? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that uh, for, do you mean for like the Facebook Lives or whatever? I think just getting a friend to do it with you and have them be the model. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that question means, but you could showcase your jewelry in a lot of different ways. Uh, but on a, on a show, um, on a show, I think like modeling it and showing, put it, pointing the camera on the actual pieces of jewelry and showing the sparkle. Like watch QVC for a while and see how they sell jewelry online or sit on the TV and that's exactly what you can do on a Facebook Live. Robin is here, Robin's in the house. Invite people to your site. Most people never ask and the answer is always no if you never ask, exactly. Great tip, Robin. Robin, you're always, Robin, I've shared a lot of uh, awesome tips from you today. Um, Kathy is asking, can you use your personal email to email bulk communications? I'd highly recommend against that. I think if you're doing one-on-one -on -one interaction, it's perfect. You don't need to do through an email uh, server, but if you're like BC seeing a bunch of people, it'll likely um, really get irritate people because they have no way to unsubscribe. And then uh, it's bad. It's bad form and a bad practice. But MailChimp has a free email service. You could sign up and get for up to like, I think 500 use, 500 email addresses, it's completely free. And it might even be up to 2,000, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it's free and it's a really easy platform to use. Uh-oh, someone's saying the video went down. Uh, it's fine for me, it's not getting glitchy, it might be your connection. Pro Facebook Live tip, if the video skips, go down and refresh your page. Thank you, uh, thanks team F and TA. All right, you guys, if you want to grab our simple sales hacks guide, head on over to floristhriveacademy.com forward slash sales hacks. Or if you're on Facebook right now, type in the words Etsy below in the comments below and you'll be automatically delivered a link to download the guide in Messenger. All right, you guys, um, I see a few more questions coming in. Let me see. I, I can stay on for like five more minutes. Let's see. Um, yes, Melissa's saying you can get a custom email address for only $5 a month with Google G Suite. Um, yeah, that you definitely can, and that's for doing, uh, that's if you wanna do something like uh, Tracy at tracymatthews.com, that's what I do, and it's a Google email address, but it's um, uh, email alias is actually what that's called. 
And Kathy says it's working again. All right, cool. Yeah, it's usually your connection. It, it, I will see it here if it's my connection. Uh, Zoe, make sure that you type Etsy in all caps below. And my team says MailChimp rocks. We're pretty sure it's free up to 2,000 subscribers. All right, you guys, uh, grab the guide, type Etsy below. Or if you're not on Facebook, you're watching this somewhere else, go ahead and type in floristriveacademy.com forward slash sales hacks. All right, you guys, have a good one. Bye.